Welcome back. I'm Curtis Smith, and we're still visiting with Ron Job, looking at things you can be doing in your garden right now. Ron, a lot of people write or they call and ask about how to grow tomatoes, whether they should be left falling on the ground, a lot of tomato rot if they're touching the ground there, right. or if they should be staked and pinched. Well, pinching removes a lot of leaves, so they tend to sun scald. And I see you're using cages, which kind of allows you the best of both. You get to leave all the side shoots on, you get more tomatoes, you don't get as much sun scald. Mm -hmm. But you keep them up off the ground so tomatoes don't rot. Right. But looking at this, I see you've also got cucumbers in cages. Yeah, I like to keep them up off the ground if I can, Curtis. Mm -hmm. uh, if they go to hit the ground, they usually rot and uh, mm -hmm. they're lost. And they're going to grow up and over pretty easily. Yeah, they do. But, but even tomatoes do that. Yeah, that's true. And I notice mm -hmm. here you're using different thicknesses of wire. You've got some pretty heavy gauge, some thinner wire here. Right. The reason uh, for this, Curtis, is I use what I have available, but the, uh, the heavy wire seems to work a little bit better in that uh, it don't uh, bend when you stack these up, and also the wind uh, doesn't bother this as much as it does some of the lighter ones. But these are adequate for most mm -hmm. gardens. So, yeah, the wind's when the thing I would worry about the most. Right. Now, I see you've got one here you've opened up for us. You're going to show us how you made it. Okay, yeah, I, uh, I take a, a, just a piece of concrete reinforcing <coughs> wire, and, I, and this is all together, of course, uh, with off the roll, and I just take the bolt cutters and cut them to separate, to separate them at the right length. And this was about four feet, wasn't it? That's right. Four foot is what I use. Uh, a little bit larger wouldn't hurt anything, but smaller I wouldn't uh, advise that one. And then I just take a small piece of pipe that just cut, goes over the wire and then just put a bend in it like that, and that's the hook. And I've noticed now you've got a lot of hooks here. You usually use just two, don't you? Right, two hooks. I use the top and the bottom. Mainly. The more you've and got, you the just, harder it is to right. put together and take apart. Right. And then you just hook it together. Stand it up. Stand it up, and you got your There it is. It's made a cage. It's going to stay pretty stable. This shows, gives us an opportunity to show something else as well. Right. A lot of people have curly top virus, or in their squash, they'll get squash bugs. We can use these cages to our advantage if we'll take a row cover material, such as this, and there are a number of these that uh, have very small holes, but they're light and they reflect sunlight. Right. And what we can do is just, uh, we'll put it on the other side, start in front here, and uh, wrap it around the cage, make sure we go to the ground, we can throw soil over it at the ground level, overlap here, and cover the top. You may have to put a clothespin or something to hold it together. Now, air can get through, sunlight gets through, the tomato grows in there, and the bugs can't get to them. True. That's or a good point. If you've got a big point. one, a squash plant and squash bugs can't get in there. So this gives a way to protect them. And if, in the early spring, this also keeps the frost out as well. Right. And you also have a little bit of that curly top here, don't you? I sure do, Curtis. This year's a bad year, it looks like. Let's go take a look at that and see what we need to do. Well, Ron, you got a lot of tomatoes out here, but even from here, I can see one up here that yeah. has curly top, very obviously. As I look at it, even from the distance, I can see the leaves rolling. They were curling over, so the bottom is pointing up, hence the name curly top, because it's curled over. I see some yellowing in here, but I also see the plant stunted. Right, and the, the purple veins is a, is a dead giveaway on this disease. Now, we can have other reasons for purple veins, but yeah, that's a real good thing yeah, to add to it. Yeah, phosphorus deficiency will give yeah. you purple, but not when the leaves are rolled, I don't think. And when you see all of these things put together, you've got right. curly top. Uh, not good. Not for sure. And what's happened here, Ron, is that uh, the virus has told the plant, quit making tomatoes and start making viruses. So the mechanism of the plant is busy making virus. If you had some tomatoes on here, they would still grow and mature, and you can eat them. Not going to hurt you. But the plant's not going to produce anymore. And this plant has no tomatoes on it. Uh, if a beet leaf hopper came and took a bite out of this, sucked some juice out of the leaf of this one, and went over to this healthy plant here, first thing it would do is inject the virus into that plant, and then it would suck juice out of this, but it's already spread the virus. Uh, insecticides will just make it do it more before it dies, and so insecticides don't help here. That wrapping uh, or doing something to contain it is what we really need to do. Um, we want to protect this plant, so what we've got to do here is protect the other plants. Right. There's only one way to do that, Chris, oh, yeah. and that's this. This is sad news, especially yeah. if you only got a few tomato plants. Pull it out. The roots still look good. Good healthy plant, except yeah. for the virus. Except for the virus. And all it does is rob the 
nutrients out of the soil for a plant that's not going to give you any produce. That's right. So it's not going to do you any good here, so pull it out. You can compost this. This virus does not spread through the soil, so if you make compost out of it, it's not going to spread through that. It's spread by bugs. This soil where you just picked it up is still good soil. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, you can plant something else here. You can plant another tomato plant here if you wanted to. Now, what do you do when you do that? I usually p plant squash or, or uh, chili or whatever plants are <laughs> that I have available this late in the season. Okay, well, that's a good idea, and people can do that. Ron, thank you very much. You bet, Curtis. Thank you for coming down.